Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over CoinMarketCap's API. Now there is an R package for this, but in case it's not maintained, I have provided some functions in order for us to use this API. So I will go ahead and leave some links in the R script so you can sign up and get your free API. Just know that rate limits apply and also you can't use all of their APIs, but I'll go over the ones that you can use. Once you sign up for your API key, it'll take you to your account. Just go ahead and copy this API key. And in the portal, you can check how many credits you've used today and how many you've used so far this month. But I've built a function that will pull this for you. So let's go take a look at the R script. So at the top of this R script, you'll find these links to sign up or sign into your portal along with the documentation for this API. All you really need to do in this R script is just paste your API key in here and it'll save it in this new environment called pass which will be used and call within some of these functions in order to make requests. So we start off with our very first function called fixed TZ or fixed time zone. Every time we make requests, it'll return a timestamp and usually these timestamps are in UTC time. So this function will just modify these timestamps and make them a local timestamp according to your time zone. So that's all this function is doing. So I'll go ahead and run this function. So our very first function for this API will just retrieve the fiats available. So if we open up this function, we will pass in the appropriate URL to get the fiats available, make a get request, pass in our API key, read in the contents from the response, and return it as a data frame. So if we go ahead and run this function, and here I'm just going to save it into this temporary variable. And if we take a look at the temp, so these are the fiats currently available that you can pass in, and it'll return the crypto prices according to the fiat you pass in. You would just pass in the symbol from the very last column. All right, so let's go back to our script. Now the very next function gets you the latest listings, and it looks very similar to the table you see when you visit coinmarketcap.com, which includes the market caps, the rankings, the percentage returns, and also the coins in circulation. So all we have to pass in in this function are the limits, which is the number of listings you want it to return, and also the fiat you wanna use. So we start off by building the URL, which will just pass in the limits and the fiat you want to use. We will make a get request, retrieve the contents, and convert all of the contents into a data frame. Here I'm just modifying some column names. We're gonna format some timestamps. I'm also going to format the quote. So the quote includes the percentage returns in several periods, the price, and its market cap. So I'm just converting these into numerical variables and formatting the percentages. Lastly, I'm just going to combine the description along with the quote and I return that data frame. So let's go ahead and minimize this function. So I'll go ahead and run it and here we'll test it out. So the limit I am setting this to is 5,000. So it'll return essentially 5,000 different crypto coins and the fiat currency I'm using is the USD or the US dollar. So if we take a look at that data frame. We do see 5,000 entries. And I believe these are all ranked by market cap. So you may notice this very first column is the ID column. These numbers represent the cryptocurrency according to coin market cap, which you can also use to call in these cryptocurrencies. But what I've done instead with this API is we're just going to use the symbol instead. So we do get a lot of useful information calling this API. We do see the circulating supply, total supply, the max supply for each cryptocurrency if available the price and the fiat at the time you made the request, the volume in a 24 hour period, the percentage change in one hour, the percentage change in 24 hours, seven days, 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days, along with the current market cap, the market cap dominance, fully diluted market cap, and when was this last updated? All right, so let's go to our next function. So the next function will just retrieve you the latest quote. And all we need to pass in is the symbol and the fiat currency you want to use. So if we open up this function, we build the URL by passing in the fiat currency and the symbol we are requesting data for. Make the get request by passing in our API key. Retrieve the contents. I'm going to go ahead and extract the quote, format the percentage changes, fix the timestamp, add the description data such as the ID, the name, the symbol. I will then format the column names for that description. 
fix the timestamp, combine the description with the quote, and then return that data frame. So let's go ahead and test this function out. All right, so here I'm gonna request the Bitcoin price in US dollars. So I'll go ahead and run that. So let's take a look at that data frame. So here we have the description, the current price and the percentage changes in different intervals, along with the market cap, market cap dominance, the fully diluted market cap, and when was this last updated. So let's scroll back to the price. So now I'm gonna make a request for the latest quote denominated in Canadian dollars. And if we take a look at that data frame, we will take a look at the price. So the price in Canadian dollars is roughly 57,000 and in US dollars, it's 45,000. So I also added a portion that will allow you to get multiple coins. So all you need to pass in are the symbols you want. So here I'm gonna specify a couple of symbols and you would just need to change the fiat here. So if we run that and then we roll bind the results and we take a look at that data frame. Now we have quotes for all the symbols we passed in, all quoted in the fiat that you specified. All right, so let's take a look at the next function. So the next function is pretty useful information. I wish Coinbase provided these metrics so we don't need to pass in anything for this function. And all we're doing is passing in the URL along with our API key, making the request, extracting the contents. I did see some repeated columns. So here I'm just removing some, formatting the timestamps, and finally just returning that data frame. So if we go ahead and minimize this function and go ahead and run it, I'm gonna go ahead and get the latest metrics. So let's take a look at that data frame. So these metrics include the number of active cryptocurrencies according to coin market cap, total cryptocurrencies, active market pairs, the number of active exchanges, total exchanges, ETH dominance and BTC dominance. And I believe these are in percentages, the dominance yesterday, the percentage changes in a 24 hour period for ETH dominance and BTC dominance, DeFi volume in the last 24 hours and the volume that was actually reported, DeFi market cap, DeFi 24 hour percentage change, stable coin volume the last 24 hours, along with the amount that was actually reported, stable coin market cap, stable coin 24 hour percentage change, derivatives volume the last 24 hours, and the amount that was actually reported, along with the 24 hour percentage change, the total market cap, the total volume the last 24 hours, the amount that was actually reported, altcoin volume, along with the amount that was actually reported, altcoin market cap, when was this last updated, total market cap yesterday, and the 24 hour volume yesterday, the 24 hour percentage change in volume, along with the percentage change in market cap. So again, very, very useful information. So let's continue on to the very next function. So the very next function is a crypto conversion calculator and it works by passing in the amount you want to convert. So here I just want to convert one Bitcoin to US dollars and it'll retrieve that conversion rate for you. So if we take a look inside of this function, same convention, we pass in the URL, make a get request, read in the content. We're going to modify some columns just to make it look more presentable, format the timestamps. And in case something happens with this API where we are allowed to make multiple conversions, we will then just pass in the number of symbols we want to convert and retrieve the contents. But as of the date of this recording, we're only allowed to specify one conversion at a time. So if we go ahead and minimize this function, I'm going to go ahead and run it. So here I'm going to convert one Bitcoin to US dollars. If we take a look at that table, so here we specified the from symbol, the amount, which was a one to US dollars. And this would be the amount in US dollars. So let's do another conversion here. I want to exchange 100 US dollars to ETH. So if we run that, we'll take a look at that data frame. So 100 US dollars gets you approximately 0 0.03 ETH. And we'll do one more conversion here. I want to exchange one ETH to ADA or Cardano. So if we take a look at that conversion, one ETH gets you approximately 1381 Cardano. I wish they would provide the conversion rate 
or the conversion price, but I did not see anything in that regard within the response, but very useful if you're trying to make quick conversions. All right, so let's go to our final function. So the final function just retrieves your plant info, which you can get when you log into your portal. But with this function, you don't really have to log into your portal. You can just get the stats from here. So if we take a look at what's inside this function, we're passing in the URL, making the request, retrieving the content. So I'll retrieve two things. One will be the plant info and the other will be the usage. And I'm going to return these as a list. So if we go ahead and minimize this function and run it. Here I'm going to make a request. And if we take a look at that list, so let's take a look at the plant info. So here I have a credit limit of 333. It'll reset in four hours and 21 minutes when it will actually reset credit limit monthly when this will actually reset and when this will actually reset as a timestamp. Now, if we take a look at the usage, so in the current minute, I have made zero requests and I have 30 left in the current day. I have made 38 requests and I have 295 left. And in the current month, I have made 119 requests and I'm left with 9,800. So unfortunately in the free version of this API, we're not allowed to get historical data, but you can get this historical data from different APIs such as Coinbase Pro. So this concludes the video guys. I really hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area where you can find this script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.